totalitarian leaders like Stalin, Mao Zedong, Castro, Maduro, and many, many more restrict the property rights of citizens to force social compliance. There are reports from all over the country about squatters setting up in privately owned homes and apartments. Someone will own a home and buy a second house and decide to rent that out. Some people inherit homes from their parents and they don't want to get rid of them. And so they put them up for rent and people are figuring out how to rig the system where you can just show up and all of a sudden you get a house because you show up, change the locks, make up a fake lease or don't even bother with that. And in many major cities across America, the police will not remove you. So how is this happening and what is ultimately behind this very odd crisis of people squatting in private property for months and sometimes years at a time? Let's look at this interesting article. It's actually from realtor.com. When squatters strike, why squatting is on the rise and so hard to solve. Atlanta attorney David Metzger recently got a call from a client in a tricky situation. She'd gotten engaged, moved in with her fiance, and decided to rent out her house. The day her home was listed, moving trucks arrived, and a woman moved in with two kids, one of them a baby. The problem? The house had not yet been rented. Metzger's client who'd heard about the moving trucks from her neighbor, had her property manager call the police. When they stopped by to check out the situation, the quote-unquote renter presented them with a fake lease, with a fake electronic signature. Presuming this lease was legit, the police left. Metzger and his client spent three months legally wrangling before they were able to remove the squatter in February of 2024, which he says is a relatively short amount of time compared to other situations. Yet, although the mother was removed by the sheriff's department, Metzger is not aware of any criminal charges brought against her. In another case, he says that his client's squatter were given 15 minutes to remove all their belongings and then allowed to simply drive off in their car. No penalties, nothing to stop them from doing it again. There are websites and social media accounts that are dedicated to helping people, including people who are coming into the country illegally, telling them the laws and the structures and the strategies on how to squat in other people's houses and how basically you can just seize a house and minimum you're going to have it for like six months. Even if the owners find out you're there, there's nothing that they can really do about it. Not only do we have the right to private property and it cannot be seized without actual due process in the Bill of Rights. So we have that. It's in the Fifth Amendment. It's quite clear, but this is an ancient principle. That's what we do on the podcast. We look at current events through the ancient wisdom of scripture. In Deuteronomy 19, 14, this is way at the beginning of, of scripture. It says, do not move your neighbor's boundary marker established at the start in the inheritance you will receive in the land the Lord your God is giving you to possess. This is like before they've even entered the promised land. They're just laying this out. Like you're going to get property and it's yours. You cannot go and infringe, cross that boundary or move that boundary on your neighbor's land. Well, we have an extreme version of that happening. We'll look at a couple of videos that are demonstrating the problem we're seeing. Brad, a local homeowner says that he is simply outraged. The squatters have taken over a house that he had planned to rent. He says they broke in and changed the locks. Channel 2 Action News tried to question two men going into the place what they had to say in just a moment. And the home located on Ashton Oak Circle in DeKalb County. Channel 2's Tom Regan there live in the neighborhood with the homeowner's struggle. Yeah, Justin, this homeowner told me that it's absolutely pathetic that these squatters seem to have more legal rights than he has. He says they broke into his home last week, changed the locks, and then showed police a phony lease. Basically, these people came in Friday, um, broke in my house, had a U-Haul, moved all this, this stuff in. Paul Callan says he was away caring for his sick wife when he swung by his vacant rental house. He discovered it was no longer vacant. He says at least three people are now living here illegally. This is probably not the first time they've done this. He told me he inherited the house from his beloved father who died of cancer three years ago. He spent thousands renovating the house himself as a rental property for government subsidized tenants. And so what you'll find, and it shows later in this video, is they, they actually, the, the reporter finds the guys who have moved in and tries to question them. And they'll just say, like, they need to go to the court. And that is what's happening is the police feel like they themselves are handcuffed. There's nothing they can really do about it. The courts take forever to process this. And so you're out thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in court fees. That's money you're never going to see back from the people who were illegally squatting in your house. And you have three to six months of someone living in your house 
potentially not taking very good care of it because we just know this. There's psychological principles behind this. You take care of something that you own way better than you take care of something you rent. And so how are you going to take care of it if you're not even renting it? You're just kind of squatting there. And the, the owners are just left like, I, what do you even do about this? Here's one of the most egregious examples. This has been going around like wildfire on social media. Today, I'm not leaving my house. Less than 10 minutes after police left and the locks were changed. The man who claims to be the one actually leasing the house shows up. Call the police again. With the other guy, police took off the property. Do you see this? This guy just literally broke down my door, broke through myself and my daughter to get in here. This guy just forced himself into my house. Yes, he did. And so did you. You broke through the front door. The man called the police on her. So why is it that I have to leave and he doesn't have to leave? Because technically he can't be kicked out. He needs to go to court. They consider this a landlord tenant issue. And by law, it has to be handled through the housing court, not with police. If you own this house, you would not want her inside. I don't own this house. Exactly. She does. Yes. But then once again, you should know how the law works. I do know how it works. There's rules to the as you got to go to court and send me to civil court. He says he signed a lease in October, but wouldn't tell us with who. I got proof longer than that. Show us the proof. Well, who are you for me to show? I showed the cops. Damn with Channel 7 News. If you don't want to show it, you don't want to show it. Come here, brother. I like that. I, I, would, I would like to see it. He didn't show me a lease. This, this is a bill. Is a bill for work he says he had done to the house. He didn't show police a lease either. The police department doesn't have the lease? No. He's got no documentation. It's just bills. So, Adele, you're getting arrested right I'm now? being arrested. For what? For being, for being, in, my, house, for being in my own home. So, the squatters, the squatters called the police on the homeowner whose property it is. They could not produce a lease. They showed a bill on work they had done to the house, probably changing the locks. Wow. And this woman would not leave. So the squatters who are illegally invading a home, you know, when someone steals your car, we call it Grand Theft Auto. But when someone steals your house, in some places, you get arrested for trying to get them out of your house. And so the question that obviously comes up is if you cannot control it, is it really your property? If someone can just walk into your house and change the locks behind them, and then you can do nothing about it, is it really yours? And this isn't the first time we have seen issues like this where legal entities and regulatory bodies have taken control of a homeowner's private property and put injunctions on them that significantly damaged the property owner. You might remember that during quarantine back in 2020, the CDC passed an eviction moratorium. Now, let me remind you, the CDC is an unelected body. These are not our legislators who represent us through our vote in the House of Representatives and in the Senate, the legislative body who legislate, who pass the laws. This, These are unelected bureaucrats who passed a moratorium that banned property owners from evicting tenants who were not paying. So if you were renting, you could just stop paying. And this lasted a long time, which meant if you owned the property, you had to continue paying. You had to pay the electricity. You had to pay the property taxes. If, if the property isn't paid off, you had to continue paying the mortgage on it, but they didn't have to pay and there was nothing you could do about it. You were literally handcuffed. And now we have homeowners actually getting put in literal handcuffs for showing up and trying to get people who have in effect stolen their property from them and are are living there squatting there and the squatters end up with more rights and you heard the squatter he told the reporter she's got to take me to court there's a process for this i just get to live in her house until someone goes through a long expensive process Bruh. it's just crazy and this is not unprecedented. Private property is part of an essential to what it means to live in a free country. It's part of what it means to have autonomy, to be able to have things that are yours. And what we have seen throughout history is that totalitarian leaders, one of the first things they do is take away property rights. Totalitarian leaders like Stalin, Mao Zedong, Castro, Maduro, and many, many more restrict the property rights of citizens to force social compliance. They want government to own everything. And what you can do is social engineering. You can take from people who are in opposition to the current political structure and then give their private property to people who are in line with you. This happens all the time, 
all over the world. And it's one of the key signs that totalitarian rule is coming and that something like socialist or communist doctrines are trying to be forced. Do I fully think that's what's happening in America? I don't. Now, I am shocked, even just in my mid-30s, the progression of people who are openly socialist, uh, even elected representatives who are openly socialist, who have communist ideals, people who are openly Marxist. And in a Marxist system, you will not own anything. Um, the Mar Marxist utopia is you will own nothing and be happy. So those two things, just at a psychological level, don't compute. We've talked about that before. So what's happening? If we're not ready as a country to go full totalitarian. And maybe you think we are, and maybe you think that's exactly what's happening. And you can tell me in the comments, if that's not true, then what is happening? Because on like on the surface level, this feels really, really easy. You own your house. Someone can't just go live in it without your permission. It just feels that simple. And there are states right now beginning to pass laws where if someone is squatting in your house, the police can show up and evict them. They can just pull them out, right? Like if someone steals your car, the cops are going to pull them out of your car and give you your car back. So people are passing those kind of laws. People are passing steeper penalties for forging something like a rental lease. If they forge those documents, they can make it a high level misdemeanor, or even a felony to try to disincentivize people from doing that. But the question remains, how did we get this thing that seems so simple, so wrong? I mean, if you've bought a home, you know, that you sign a thousand pieces of paper. Wow. Like there's no way this paper trail is that difficult to determine. I think we get this wrong because we no longer have an objective basis for things like justice, ethics, or morality in our country. Justice is getting what you deserve and not getting what you do not deserve, which means when the law implicitly takes the side of the squatters who are in your house. That is an injustice. When you have to spend $10,000 and wait six months to get your own property back, that is an injustice. But we see this and we see this in scripture when people turn away from God and they turn to their own ideas or to the pagan ideas of the world around them, then things like injustice naturally follow. In Isaiah 59, Isaiah is pronouncing judgment for the people of God turning away from God. And part of what he says is justice is turned back and righteousness stands far off for truth has stumbled in the public square and honesty cannot enter. It's like, can we just be honest? This is easy. I own this home. You can't be in here. And so the government structures around me have to have my back on that. But we no longer have an objective basis for what is just or what is ethical or what is moral because we no longer have a transcendent standard of God. And when we become materialists and when we become humanists, then we now have subjective standards. And now it's just about your opinion. And if you can make a more compelling speech for why someone else should be able to hijack my own home, then I guess maybe you're right. But I think that these are objective truths, and most people think that as well. The problem is the majority of people now who will say it's objectively wrong for squatters to take over your home don't believe in a God to ground that objective statement in. And as long as we continue to walk further and further away from God, we're going to see very obvious, simple situations like this that will really struggle as a country to get right. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed so you can stay up to date with all new content. And if you want early access, exclusive content, and monthly live Q&As, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Clayton Tyner.